In this series of episodes, we're going to build a robust blogging application using Rails 5 and Bootstrap 4. I'm going to assume that you already have the latest versions of Ruby and Rails installed. If you don't, there's plenty of guides around the web for how to do that. To get started, we're going to open up the terminal. Yours will probably not be red. I have customized mine. I am going to cd down into a directory called episodes. On your computer, you may want to create a folder called projects or something like that if you don't already have one instead of episodes. The next thing you want to do is check your Ruby and Rails versions and make sure that they are something similar to mine. So I'm running Ruby 2.2.5 and Rails 5.0. All right, so now we need to actually get started on the actual project. So we're going to create a new app with Rails. Wait for that to install. Once that finishes, we're going to CD down into the app we just created. Make sure that everything is there. And then I'm going to run Rails S to start the server. And once the server starts, I'm going to jump over to Chrome and make sure that uh, localhost 3000 is, is right. So open up a new window, localhost 3000, and awesome, it's working. So the next thing that we need to do is open up our code in the text editor. So hit Control C to stop the server. Um, I have Sublime Text running, so I'm just going to type in subl dot to open up the code full screen. Um, so the first thing that we want to do in here is install some different software uh, that we're going to be using. The first thing that I'm going to set up is actually Bootstrap. So I'm going to jump back over to my browser so that you can see where the documentation for this is. So we're at github.com slash twbs slash bootstrap dash rubygem. And I'm going to follow the instructions here for Ruby on Rails. So just copy this, jump back over to the code, open up your gem file, and then somewhere here at the bottom just paste this. And then back in the terminal we're going to run bundle install. Now that that has installed back in the browser, there were a few more steps we needed to do. So we need to put import bootstrap into application.scss, which needs to be changed from the CSS file, that's what they're telling us. And then we need to require bootstrap sprockets in our application.js. Okay, so just copy this in our code. In the app, assets, style sheets folder, you have application CSS. First thing I'm gonna do is rename this to SCSS. Then for the moment, I'm just gonna delete all of this and paste in at import bootstrap. And if I remember correctly, in the JavaScript application JS, uh, right here, we need to require uh, bootstrap sprockets and make sure that's correct. Require jQuery, require bootstrap sprockets. Seems like they put it right there. Okay. So I think we're done with this file and this file. The next thing we're going to install is something called friendly ID. If I jump back to the browser, I have a new tab open. Um, it's uh, github.com slash norman slash friendly underscore id. Um, you want to scroll all the way down to this Rails quick start. We're going to copy this gem friendly id. I'm going to go ahead and grab this note too. Um, put that right below bootstrap. doesn't really matter. As long as it's not in the group development test or group development, you're fine then we just need to bundle install and then I need to run this rails generate friendly ID. So back in the terminal, first thing we're going to do is bundle and 
then Rails generate friendly ID. Okay, so now we're actually ready to start building something. Really fast, back on this page, there's this thing that relates to friendly ID that you need to remember called slug. So whenever we create our blog posts, we're going to add a slug string unique, which is for friendly ID. All right, let me actually copy this so that I don't forget. And we're going to run Rails G, which is short for generate scaffold post. We're going to put um, title string um, body text. I'm going to have a description, which is going to be text. And then that thing I just copied, slug string unique. The next thing we're going to do is run Rails DB Migrate, which is different from older versions of Rails. Now in Rails 5, instead of saying Rake DB Migrate, you say Rails DB Migrate. So back in our code, the Rails Generate Scaffold command generated a number of things for us. Uh, it created this post model. It created this post controller, plural. In our views folder, it created posts and then a number of views which correspond to these actions in the controller. To get friendly ID working the way that I want, there's a couple more things we need to add to the post model. So we're going to actually write some code here. So back in the browser, we need to write extend friendly ID and then we need to tell it what we want to use the friendly ID on. So for the moment, just copy this and then we'll put extend friendly ID and we want to use the friendly ID on the title. We're also going to define a method called should generate new friendly ID question mark and we're going to say title changed. This should generate new friendly ID is part of the friendly ID uh, code base and then this title change is part of Rails. So whenever we update the title we also want to update the slug which will make a lot more sense in just a minute. The last thing that we need to do before we try this out is jump over to our post controller if you look at the top, you have this before action set post, and then it lists a number of actions that it that it's going to work on. That set post action is looking up a post in the database based on the ID that comes in through the URL. So we are going to say friendly right here, and that's going to get everything working for us. The very last thing that we want to do is jump over in routes which is inside your config folder. And we want to say root to posts index. I believe that's how it's written. And now we can jump into our terminal from the server again. And now when we go to localhost 3000, refresh, Here we have our blog. So let's give it a shot. If we click new post, we get a form uh, with a title, body description, slug. Um, let's try it. So we can say my first post. I could type. and leave this slug blank and if we click create post you'll see in the URL we get post slash my dash first dash post so this is the slug so what it does is friendly ID takes the title and converts it into something like this that it can use to look it up later without friendly ID you just have numbers up here which is not normal for a blog so if we go back 
you can see we have a post listed. If we click show, it's showing slug. Um, and if we edit the post title, you can see that the slug gets updated up here. So that's what we did before when we said in the post model should generate new friendly ID did the title change basically. There are a few things that we want to clean up in the form. We don't want there to be a field for slug. That's something that's automatically generated so we're going to take that away. Save that. In the post controller we have this uh, post params thing, which is a part of Rails strong parameters. Um, we just don't want to let people pass in a slug. That's something that's automatically generated. So we're going to take that away and then go back over here. And now we shouldn't have that field anymore, and we don't. Um, OK. There is one more quick thing I want to do. If you look in the title in the tab it just always says frog blog um, what we would like to happen is when you're looking at a particular post that it puts that title up there so I want to do that and it's going to be the last thing in this video in the next video we're going to work on actually styling this out and making it look like a real blog so if we jump back to the code and close everything we want to open up a uh, the layout file application.html.erb. Now the layout file is basically a wrapper that gets wrapped around each of your views. So you have your, your HTML declaration, your head tag, and then your body. And then each view gets inserted where this yield tag is. Now we can pass variables around between the layout and the actual views and this is where we're going to do that here. So what I'm going to do is say yield and then page title. And then a pipe and then frog blog. Now to get this to work, actually let me show you what happens if I just save it like this. Let me save that and we'll refresh and we get an empty thing in the middle pipe frog log and then in our posts let's look in the show at the very top I'm gonna put uh, provide page title and then at post dot title So now you have the post title up there, but we also want that on all the other pages. So we can copy this um, on new. We're just going to say over here, we just want to say new post on edit. What we'd like to do is say edit and then the title of the post and on the index we'll just say all posts so now no matter what we click on we should have something in the title yep that is all that we're going to cover in this episode um, however back in the code if you're new to Rails, I wanted to make a couple of quick points just to help you out for the, you know, understanding what we did and upcoming episodes. So in the controller, I made a comment earlier that each action, which this def index, def show, def new, those are all actions. Um, they correspond to views over here. So. Um, you could go pretty deep into this, but the only thing that I wanted to say was that this variable here with the at sign is called an instance variable, and it is automatically available in the view that corresponds to it when you're, when you're there. So for instance, in index we have at posts equals post.all, and 
then back in the view we have at post and we can iterate through them and call methods on each one. And it's the same thing for show. We have one individual post that we're looking at that has an instance variable. Um, we call methods on it and you can see that back in the controller. Um, in this case we're using this before action we talked about earlier with set post. So show is in this list. So for show you have set post, at post, it equals post, friendly ID, stuff. The other thing I wanted to point out, because you're going to see it in all the future episodes in this series, is that if you look at these tags with the parentheses and the angle brackets, these are called ERB tags, and there are two different flavors. One of them has an equal sign, like this one, and one of them does not. Um, the one without an equal sign means basically don't print this out. Um, it's just kind of a calculation or something to that effect. If you have an equal sign, it means actually print this out. And you can see what I mean if you actually add an equal sign here. And we save this, it's going to print out some kind of ugly object looking thing. So if I just go to the root page, you see that you have an array of all of the posts being printed out. Um, so you don't want to print that, you just want to use the iterator. So that is the last point that I wanted to make. So that's it for this lesson and I'll see you next time.